and we're, we're live. Afrobeat Intelligence Podcast. Afrobeat Intelligence, democratizing African music. So, when you started, you started at a time before Afrobeats to the world. Wow. Yes, you did. You did. Understandably, yes. Yes, you did. You, you did. You did. <laughs> As part of that, can Afrobeats break out? Yeah. Yes, you're part of that generation that came in and decided that they wanted more than the ceiling, more than the ceiling that we have hit. Hmm. Yeah. And yes. you broke in just before Afrobeats to the world. Just before Made in Lagos. Just before Made in Lagos, yes. You, you did. <laughs> yes, yes, you did. Yes, you did. Before and African Giants. Yeah, before African so. Giants and all, you 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 broke in. So mm-hmm. it was, I like to think it was a generation that, that had to. That hacked it. Yeah. Yeah, generation hacked it. Yeah. That's why we have what we have now, because your generation hacked it. Sure, we still have the bonds from the past. Whiskey, Davido, Bonner Boy. I'm going as far as 20 to Twitter, Plantation Boys, mm-hmm. and Style Plus. Yes. I was there. Yes, you were there. Mm. You were there and you, and you were making music. I still like kid though, but I was there. Yeah, but the, the, the thing is, now when you blow, be your set. Facts. Uh-huh. I don't blow before, but uh, I know my, my set. set. I shall care. Uh-huh. That actually has to be, he used to be my best friend, you know? For real? Fun facts. <laughs> ah, nice. It's, he's still my brother, but like, the game is the game. The game is the game. I understand. Yeah. But like, and you came at the time before this and then Afrobeats to the world, just before Afrobeats to the world, that's when you announced your presence. Mm. And then Afrobeats to the world happened. How, how did that, how did that modify, how did that influence or modify your approach to the game, Afrobeats to the world? I'm not going to lie to you. Afrobeats to the world started from Kenneth's music. True. Before Mavins, before Mohit. Mohit came, the band, the prince, K-Switch, them niggas took it to like UK standard. Yeah. Diaspora standard. Mm-hmm. Firstly, um, P-Square and the band are the first mega super rock stars that we had in Afrobeats. True. Take it or leave it. In conjunction with Shino Peters, by the way. Yeah. Shino Peters was a star. He is a star. Like, that man who went to match from yeah. head to toe. He knew it was him. The band, P-Square, Plantation Boys, Kenneth Music, generally, yeah. Anita Twilla, Two Face, Black Face, Face. They literally just opened the door for men, you know, to realize that you can be a star in your own right. True. But Afro Beast to the world started from, honestly, I might be wrong and I might be chatting shit. Correct me, but it started from Oliver Twist. Yes, I agree. I agree. African Queen did its thing. And I'm not taking any to away from African Queen. Yes. African Queen was a classic. Yeah. It is a, tr- a classic. It is still a classic. I but, wish I could even have a was, song with Two-Face. Yeah, but it was Oliver Twist that showed us what was possible. Bro, Oliver Twist made us know what good music and is. is. Yeah. Like, I'm talking to you as Joyakan, Afrobeat enthusiast, yeah. Afrobeat historian. Yeah. Oliver Twist made us understand that, okay. Maybe I say if we crack the diaspora. Something did that way. And they like us. With David Burner, Kiss Daniel, Olamide, Pato Rankin, my woman. Yes. See, this thing is bigger than the three horse race. So yeah. Except you want to be humble and timid and sound like generic about the whole scenes. But like, it's bigger than that three horse race. Imagine that style plus, Olufumi yeah. style plus. Yeah. Like, men held this thing down. Efe Jokuni, Shoki, Lil Kesh. Like, Men held this thing down. Kiss yeah. Daniel would you like Kiss Daniel has even been a first record in the African scenes and diaspora scenes, even if you know it might not be as diaspora as Brona, might not be as diaspora as Wiz. Let's be honest, there are people that are more than Wiz, Dave, David, and Brona that have been putting in work. Yeah. I'm not saying they are more than them, but like there are more people that have been putting in work more than those three horse races. Yeah. And I love those three horses, like three giants. Yeah. But there's more work that has been put into Afrobeats. Yes. Olumente Yahuze was the beginning of dance challenges. Yeah, true. True. I remember. Yeah. Who am I? I what remember. do I know? I remember. Yahuze. Alanta. 
Yeah. Is sweet like fire. Those uh, earthquake. Yeah. My bro, like these guys don't even get their, they don't even get their props. Like, I'm not trying to sound like Metusela, but like people don't do this pee before even me I start, and they don't even get their props. Earthquake. Yes, earthquake. Did. Tutti boys. Yes, they did. Um, small doctor. Mm-hmm. Like men, men don't they mount before men believe that they mount. Yes. I know. Vector, Fouls. Yeah. yeah. Like, they're even new generation people. It's like, oh, I pee. Oh, yeah. black. Like, the people that have been holding this thing before they even got their recognition. Ojumodu has been in this game for t- over 10 years. As a manager, first of all, mm-hmm. <laughs> I tweeted Ojumodu 2019, first block party. I like you popping and testify. Like, I'm an industry baby and I, I, I see the growth. I recognize the growth. I appreciate I appreciate the growth and I respect it. I I get you. And sometimes I I look at how we have come forward as a as a music culture and how much recency bias plays into a lot of things. And I'm like, and from time to time I always say, yes, we might celebrate the ones who did in quotes in this new the age, most did it first. Yes. There's always a f- first to do this first. So we can celebrate the ones who did it first. But it does not but, take but away from the, from the ones, ones who do, who just do. Who, who has been doing. Who, who has been doing. A lot of what just are in Like, yeah. bro, like, <laughs> men, they, say the key, a man, they, said the key, man, who, I mean, Ruba boy, I'm sorry, indigenous rap is a part of my development. Yeah. Like, and hey, Nibiru, J1, like, tennis a, music. Yeah, it was a strong Like, part. let's even go, let's even go back. Historians, M1, Kotimo, so, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Afrobeat S- historians. Essence, like, J1. My bro. Them, we've done. This girl that has gold at the back of her name. Goldie. Goldie. Yeah. God bless her soul. God bless her soul. Goldie's using why Yemi and can talk. Goldie was the, I'd like to think Goldie was the first alter woman. Goldie was the first unapologetic in her own right. Yeah. Man, would you open the doors for the likes of Tame Sim? Yeah, even the Amelia Yeah, she, Goldie she. is her. Yeah, I joined the industry. I feel in, so good that <laughs> we are mentioning these names because they never even get no, they never do. It's sad, it's sad, but but that's that's also because back then, too, Sonia the, can win. No. Yeah, Chris Okoti, mm-hmm. Ebenezer Obey, mm-hmm. Sonia. I was just with my grandma, bro. Like, this interview is going to go as far as. Even before I was born, if you want to even talk about it. I know. I know. That's the... So, one thing I've tried to do, one thing I'm trying to do now mm. is, and I'm going to propose it and then try to like set up something to... Please, bro. We just to, enlighten us. Yes. We have to We have to fully acknowledge and platform classic Nigerian In music. all ranges and categories. Yes. There's classic... Ni- now, everyone's focused on what we have become in mm. this post-modernization age mm. of Afrobeats. Mm. But we had the pre-modernization. Bro, we are style plus. Like, yes, firstly, ha- I understand with Bonner and David at the front top three. Yeah. It's style plus. Yes. It's plantation boys. Yes, they did, they did it all. It's not be say, like, no, let's go to comedies. Let's go to comedian. It's Alibaba. Yeah. It's Basket Mount. Yeah. There are OGs that have been pushing this Afrobeat. It's cool to be an Afrobeat movement guy from the jump. Like, I'm only 26, but I know this piece. Yes. Because, yeah. because You've been now sick. then we grew up listening to Alibaba. Are you whining me? Do you want to tell me? You want to tell me you don't know Alibaba? No, we all do. No, we all do. Okay. So, moving, like, narrow, narrowing, like, your work down to what happened. Um, So you mentioned earlier about like (coughs) Kulosa Mm. coming from a place of... Futuristic conversations. Yes. (laughs) 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 Okay. You mentioned, you mentioned Kulosa coming from a place of pain and scandal um, of depression Mm. and all of that. In 2020, you had a, you had a scandal. Wow. So, before yeah. you talk, yeah, I saw like just, just yeah, before, I yeah, I, but, but I saw, but, but we all saw it, we all saw yeah, it, man. We all did, even we me, did. yeah, even, even me, you did, yeah. even me, you saw it, like, yeah, straight up. And this is the first time I'm talking was, about it because I, I keep skipping that question, but let's go. Okay, so we saw what happened when your videos showed up on the internet, legendary, 
Yeah, not one, not two. Yeah. Not three. It, was a, it was a full series, man. A full series. You give us a series. And well done. Well and done. Them niggas. What? <laughs> you give us a full series. Yeah. And before that, and I'll, I'll speak about it on the back end, before it became public. Mm. On the back end, I saw the like, from the back channels, I kept hearing that these videos existed. What was it like to know that they finally made it to the public space? It was a peace of mind for me because, like, I, I was getting blackmailed for two years. You're getting blackmailed? Yeah. How? This content have existed way before, like, they broke out. Yeah. They've existed way before they even had a reason to break out. I paid that black bill money, trust me. You played, you paid black bill money? Yeah. So people kept threatening you that they were going Not to drop people, it? Uh, certain accounts just kept threatening me. And when it came, I was like, finally, man. Like, guys, y'all know I can smash. Like, <laughs> at this point, nigga, you can't even chat shit. Like, I was, I was like the measurement to quality sex to some man that, hmm. that I'll fuck you better than Oxlade type conversations. But like, that wasn't, that wasn't the side effects. The side effects was hearing my grandma cry. Oh, no. Asking me if I was going to be the one to end her. No way. So it, it, it affected your family more than it did you. It affected my family. For you, it was relief that you don't have to deal yeah, with yeah, this yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It affected my family, but then it affected my mental health. In what way? I lost all my endorsement deals. For real? We got a very mad hypocritic system that people don't even know that happens. When you get to be bashed, your market value, your price tag, and every affiliation you get tends to depart from you. For and real? For real and for fake. And I got every every side of it. I lost all my endorsement deals. Four of them, by the way. So they just hit you up and then they told you, sorry, this is happening to you. Yeah, we, can't, we, can't, lost, we can't affiliate with you anymore. I lost all my deals. Any deal that you know that I was affiliated, calculate it. Yeah. Everything. Up to like 400 million, like straight no up. No way. And, you know, I was, I, I went I went back into the dark. It was like, finally happened, but like still. And nothing really hit me until my grandma asked me, Shovek Pamini. Shovek Pamini means, do you want to kill me? Do you want to be the one that like buries me? Oh, that's... She made my, my mother. And I happen to be the reason she goes before I make her proud of me is depressing and devastating enough to want to go into rehab. Mm. I went into rehab. I made this song like two days after the scandal. Insane. Agenda. I stopped working with a certain term team of people. They tried to get back at me with my scandal because I opened my Snapchat with their phone. But like, that's a conversation I don't want to have with anybody. I don't even like to have with anybody, but like, it affected me. It affected my doings. It affected everything around me. People didn't understand. And the fact that it was more than one video makes it obvious that it was an agenda, but like, Nigerians just love judging and I don't care at this point, but like, the judgmental aura really had a bad effect on me. I went to London for rehabilitation. Three months later, I found out my son was a Arguably a potential smash. I went back on TikTok, started making three contents every day on TikTok. I still got dragged on the timeline for being cringe. On top, say I did push my hustle, so, yeah. but like still on steel. Like the biggest win is the plaques, bitches. Like the biggest win is the fact that I'm still Oxlade and there's nothing you can absolutely do about it. But what did you, that entire situation? I know it was hard for you. Oh, what I learned. Yeah. I don't hear the whole question you ask me. What I learned from that is it be your own people. Okay. It be your own people. Straight up. Your growth, your progress still scares your team. It still causes insecurity around people that think they're him in your team. And thanks to God, God Almighty, Jehovah Rafa, Jehovah Nisi, God Almighty, Making them understand that your agenda cannot stop his agenda. Sure. Like, imagine me, I was growing myself after a tragic scandal. 
True. Like, I just fucking skyrocketed from where, how, when, where, who, like, what platform, how. I don't, like, even up until now, I don't get how close I became arguably one of the biggest songs last year. I have five nominations on the head is, if that song was not a success, I won't do that. Sure. Like, yes. But how did you feel after going through this rehab in London for three months? Yeah, after, 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 <laughs> yeah, after going to, after going to the depths of the darkness, you know, mm. with this negativity that, has, mm. that had enveloped you, after seeing your world not crumble, but like threaten to cave in. And then somehow there's this ray of light, Kulosa. How did that feel? Fun facts. And I'm not trying to be like a carbon copy of my idol. Yeah. Your mentor equally as a sex slave. <laughs> okay. That didn't end up panning well for him, but, you know, greatness comes with different goliaths. True. Sure. And I learned from that. Him outdoing and overcoming that face just made me understand that it's possible for me to understand it. Shouts to one day cool. That's my dad. Yeah. That's the reason why a bunch of us can't fall settle. True. That's the reason why a bunch of us can actually claim we're singer. That's the reason why the evolution of Afrobeat started. The face of Afrobeats right now are not the reason why evolution of Afrobeats is happening. I understand that they're a whiskey type of artist, but like even whiskey learns from Randy Cole. Yeah. Learned. Yeah. I don't say learned. Learned, yeah, of course. Learned. So I don't I don't get into trouble with the FC. <laughs> I'm a full FC. Like as back as true Larry, I would argue with anybody that Wiz is better than anybody. Yeah. After Davido put me on, I'll argue that Davido is the hardest artist on earth. Mm-hmm. And then Organically and merit wise, Burner Boy deserves everything he's getting right now. Yeah. Because he's pushing Afrobeats to the next level. But, like, I won't lie. I've always been a Wiz guy. Even if I knew that one day was my foundation, one day was, was everything to me. Wiz still means everything to me. Wiz is the reason why I can believe that I can make it from the streets. Yeah. Like, and still push Afrobeats in diaspora. Like, Wiz is the blessed guy. Burner is the guy that proves everybody wrong. Yeah. And one day is the actual source. True. I'm sorry if you don't understand what I just said, but I said it. So, Kulosa happened. What did Kulosa do for you as an artist? I know what it did for your mental. Like, it was validation for your journey and seeing how, you know, you could rise from in quotes, the ashes. You're a bit of a phoenix. But what did what did it do for you? You made me like, realize that, like, you don't even need to go extra hard to be a diaspora artist. How did you create it? How did you create Closer? I mean, Closer, I was in love with a certain person. Yeah. person that inspired O2, not yeah. living teen, also inspired Closer. I made it, like, you know, long-distance relationship kind of banters. Mm-hmm. Me trying to explain to her that this distance taking a hold of me for sure. If it come. <laughs> <laughs> the word closer started to birth from when I started to think of the name of the album. Kulosa is like as per closer, but like I don't want to say closer because you know, um the people that came before us succumbed to the pressure of the um what did they call them? Colonial masters. Yeah. And every song on my album has nothing to do with colonialism. That's what actually is the beauty of my album. Kulosa, Over Me. Yeah. You know, there are bare songs on that album that has nothing to do with colonialism. Fighting against addiction, fighting yeah. against the status quo, yeah. against the rules. Every song on my album is African themed. And, you know, Kulosa was just the beginning and the genesis of what I was trying to do. The first artist that did that song was Asha K, by the way. Oh, closer. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Before, what was the feedback? Oh, he was lit. <laughs> <laughs> he was lit. Yeah. Listen to it in the front car, and it was like, Oxlade, what's going on? This is not you. This is new. It was like, I was morphing into something different, and he, 
he recognized it and he spotted it out. But there was this guy called Soa. Yeah. He's from Abuja. He's an artist, A&R. Mm-hmm. One of my A&Rs. Like, he's blunt. So yeah. He go tell me I really do. And he told me, what if this song charts? And I was like, so you, weren't, you didn't believe in it on that level? Up until now, I don't still believe in it. <laughs> like, I didn't believe that song was going to change my life. It changed my life due to the people around me, like the a and the young a that actually saw the vision. And then after I came back from rehab, I just, all I had to do was put extra fire. Three contents every day. You like it, you don't like it. You cringe. I, Ogungo Kyo cringe. <laughs> Literally, Richie just corrected me. It was four contents every four. day. I called all the influencers in Afrobeats. I was making contents with them. I was getting trades. This guy is cringe. Why is he making contents? Like, why is he making contents to a song? Like, it looks like he's bleaching. Yeah. Bro, what did I not see? What did I not get? Niggas from Ogun State, Oro, Shoki, tweeting shit. They can't even have three three square meal. <laughs> I was going through live trying to promote my music because I was producing my music and I believe in my music. I'm not saying I'm the reason why TikTok is booming right now, but I'm one of the reasons why t- TikTok has value right now. Because like, up until now, because, bro, I mean, I don't want to call myself a TikTok artist, but like, like 20% of my shit, of my grind. Yeah. It's TikTok, TikTok success. And nobody on this podcast watching this podcast in every frame, left, wide, any frame can question the importance of TikTok in your market. True. I'm talking Apple, Spotify, and all DSPs. Yeah. If you are chatting shit, you are just chatting shit. Yeah, TikTok has a hold on us. For sure, baby, come. But why were you doing, so why were you doing for content a day why was four the magic number because it was never even a magic number it was a matter of i've lost everything yeah i'm stereotyped yeah i'm profiled some some parents don't even rape me no more some parents think i'm bad influence to their children yeah. up until now some organizations don't even see me worthy of their brand stigmatization stereotyping profiling and I just feel like against the odds, una papa. <laughs> sick of say this song, sweet. Yeah. Just sick of say no song, sweet. Pass this song this year. Yeah. And I'm saying this to every generation, by the way. Okay. <laughs> Why? <laughs> like, so what, if you what? mention, no, 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 no. I'm putting it out there. If you mention songs, oh, like, yeah. after this, you can subtweet and whatnot. Let's conversate. Just in case I don't know, just in case I don't know anything about yeah. Afrobeats. Why wow. did you go to rehab? Because out of everybody that reached out to me after the saga, the only thing that actually damaged me was the voice of my mom. Okay. She's not my mom, she's my grandma, but like Yeah, she but said, she's your mom. She like she's your she plays two roles. Bro, she plays your mom and your grandma. My bro, role. literally. She's your mother. All she asked me was, Oh like no, she make her mean. What that means is, which is my real name, do you want to be the end of me? That was the shock, that was the strike, and that was the end. Whatever anybody tweeted, whatever mm. posts, whatever videos, when I was the cash vibes, just want to try and understand, like, you need me to get numbers. I get it. Like, I love you guys also. The game is a game, the grind is a grind. But, like, the end product was me realizing my grandma was affected by that. And it was like the end of everything. It was like the end and the beginning. It was like, shit. What What did rehab offer you? Serenity, peace. You were away. You stayed away from everything and everyone. I, I was not my phone. Oh. Hey, rehab does not let you handle your phone. True. Social media, accountability for your failures. So it's like generic thinking, yeah. But you being accountable for your bullshit. Mm. And what did your time in rehab do to you? Wow. Fixed, rearranged. I don't really understand that. I don't really have purpose. 
It made me realize that the game is cruel. And also brought me to the attention that nobody really gives a fuck except your wedding. Yeah. I fell. Like, bro. So, all my life, people have been tweeting Oxley Fellow. <laughs> I'm just putting it out there. But for the first time in my life, for the first time in my life, after like that tragic moment, I felt like, yeah, you don't need to tell me I fell off for me to know I fell off. I could fight it. Like, what do you mean? I have Kolo with Ice Prince. What do you mean? I have all my life. And my, I have Ojuju. Like, I've been dropping catalog. Like, nobody ever said I fell off and it hit different up until the tragic moment. And I was like, yeah. Oxlade, if you're ever going to come out of this, it's just God's grace. It's it's not even talent at this point. I've got bare talented people that are still struggling to come back up. Yeah. Conga is the face of gibberish music. Yeah. Take it or leave it. I'm not trying to know why he he's not here yet, but I don't want to be one of the artists that you don't know why he's up here yet. And Kulsa just gave me a break. Yeah. Make me made me understand that I could outdo the entire status quo and the labels and the squadrons and the teams. Bro, people they pay payola on a heavy, hefty basis. Like yeah. that I cannot even mention that even if I talk about I'll get blackboard, but like Payola is a thing. Influencing marketing is a thing. I'm not against all these things. Well, stream farming is a thing. But I didn't need that to be great. Yeah. I didn't need any of that to be great. Hmm. So, you've gone to the depth. You've gone to the depths of the world. You've been through the darkness. You've navigated it. And you've come out stronger. Yes, you have. You, you've come out the winner. God's, God's grace brought me out of here. Straight up, because left some people not meant to be here. Even left some people still tweet that I'm not here. <laughs> is that insane? Like the bad blood is full in the African race. That even with you, you can even testify to this. Like I'm never saying this as per someone that's trying to be great. I'm saying this as per someone that is African and against all odds is still great. Yeah. Yes. I get you. <laughs> I get you. And Oxlade from Africa. Yes, we understand why you've, why you've named your project Oxlade from Africa. What is an Oxlade for Af- for, from Africa? Everything. The pain. Yeah. The sweat. The stigma. The gatekeeper. Me trying to analyze appropriately what I mean by Oxford from Africa, the trajectory, the motif, me trying to own my explanation of what Oxford from Africa means to the entire populace, me trying to make them understand that I understand what it means to eat bread and beans as a three-square meal. Yeah. Me trying to understand and make them understand that poverty is not something dessert. Poverty is part of the ways of life. Yeah. Poverty is one of the triggers that makes greatness. True. Me trying to make them understand that I'm a living proof to the fact that poverty does not define who you are. Me trying to make them understand that being black does not change your perspective or your goals of an African. Me making them understand that you don't need to be the most privileged to be the most biggest star. Yeah. And and the brightest in the sky of the stars. Sure. Oxley from Africa is a statement piece to the ops, to the believers, to those fans of Joy Akan. I just listens to his podcast and to everybody that believes in the memo grass to grace. <laughs> <laughs> I do with you one billion. I, I, I'm with you, brother. You've always approached life from a very... You've always approached life from a... 
from your heart. Yeah, that's how you've always been one to like touch your heart all the time. Like you speak from your heart, you you move via your heart, you move with a sincerity of purpose. How has the world responded to that? Being this person, speaking from your heart, talking from your heart, approaching the world from your heart. Is it first, is it hard to do? It's, it's tasking. Okay. It's challenging. Knowing that, that 90% of the game is fake is a realization that I learned from the, from, from like from the ending and from the last part of my growth and development yeah. as an artist. But it also made me understand who did it for me and who did it for me. Evidence always shows yeah. the work creates for those actually who did it for you. Yeah, true. I learned the hard way, I learned the easy way. And I realized that nobody can actually love you than yourself. True. So, even the disappointments and people that move for me, I'm not surprised at this point. It's just like, oh, you said you move for me. Okay, now you get ups. Mm. It doesn't change anything from my agenda, what I'm yeah. trying to achieve. And now, at this point, I knew an Oxlade that has seen the depths of hell. <laughs> <laughs> literally, in yes. terms of literature, okay. Yeah, you've seen the depths of hell. Facts. Even before you became, even before you began to self-actualize, you've seen the depths of hell. Even while you're self-actualizing, you have also like gone to the depths still. You've gone through the darkness and all that. At this point, this this space that you're in, you have a new album coming out. You're on the up. And I'm thinking, what is in it for you? When you, when the lights go off, when all the cameras get shut off, when you are by yourself, what is the thing, this thing that you're doing, this journey that you're on, what is in it for you? What do you think you're getting out of this? The fact that everybody that fought for my relevance, everybody that fought for me to stay here, can still bully everybody that second guessed me. Yeah. That is the entirety. That's the purpose. Bragging rights for everybody that actually believes in my dreams. Yeah. The fact that they were not believing in rubbish and jargons. Yeah. The fact that they fought for the right cause. The fact that, like, after my album, see, eh? <laughs> after my album drops, eh? The fact that the entire movement and the fan base is bullying everybody else and making everybody feel stupid is the essence of the album. It's like, you dumb. Like, do you understand music? Yeah. Do you know what music is all about? Like, if you don't know what music is all about, you listen to Intoxicated. Listen to incomplete. Listen to Oxygen music and catalog. And if you tell me that with this vast knowledge of music that you have, with your dumb score, I don't understand music from Oxygen's perspective, then you don't deserve to be a music enthusiast. And and when you when you sit and then access gratitude, what are you mostly grateful for? I'm grateful for the ones that fought by me. That stood by me. The ones that watched me grow, even in my imperfection. The ones that understood that growth is a slow and gradual process. The patient ones are the actual superheroes. I've been dropping music on my life. People have been upsetting me. People have been hating me. The ones that actually stood behind and said, yes, we were here from day one. I were like, we knew that Oxley was going to give us 100%. Now he has given us 100%. What the fuck do you want to say? Is your mom deaf? True. The ones that understand my plaques and my glory don't understand my greatness. The ones that understand that even in pain and sorrow, I was still here. Those are the ones that do this for. 
the ones that realized that my music was never for everybody but just for them yeah i'm not doing this for everybody bro like even as i did like this for my team eh i don't really explain make everybody like my music yeah the ones who like come understand the vision mm-hmm. and when the song actualizes they go tell you say okay we be new say oh this song go go to amsterdam how far you will not believe we'll be ups it wants up like this. How lifeless are you? I'm doing this for those that never believed in me. I'm doing this for those that never even saw the light in my brightness. I'm doing this for those that never really understood that I was always a musician they knew they never needed. Okay. And, well, I'd like to say, just as a closer, I'd like to say thank you so much for being true to yourself. Thank you for constantly pursuing, like... <coughs> the realness in your heart. Thank you for being authentic and thank you for approaching life from a very heartfelt perspective. Thank you for being authentic, Julia Khan. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for being authentic. Thank Authenticity you. starts from the questions you're asked rather yeah. than the answers you give. True. Julia Khan, thank mm. you for sticking to how Afrobeat is meant to be appreciated and not how Afrobeat is meant to be seen. Thank you. Thank you for standing for the ones that didn't even have the voice. Like, my bro, I'm not signed to Maven. In all camera and lenses, I'm Tronic Music. Who the fuck is Tronic Music? Who the fuck knows Tronic Music? Thank you, Joya Khan, for giving people like me a reason to even talk. Yeah. Because if it's, if it's less than stars as cool, the early stars... The major labels will listen to those that are signed by the major labels. Yeah. So Yakan Khan does not realize or even see the power play. No. She sees nothing. the authenticity. Yeah. Nothing. I'm not even giving him PR. I'm just speaking from like my life. Like, I'm not even saying it. Bro, I'm not saying I don't give a fuck about Joya Khan, but like, the fuck I hear about Jack and is the fuck he hears about me. Always. Always. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, brother. This has been this has been a pleasure. <laughs> okay. And 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 then and then he spoke about like when he was articulizing about my shit. He said vulnerability, the brightness in his face, the excitement in how he explained everything. Of course, of course. The three screens and modes of like expressing who I was never changed. I've, like it's never it's never happened. I'm still excited to speak about myself. Yeah. I'm still authentic about who I am. And I'm still straight as fuck about the message I'm trying to pass. If you spend ten K dollars to push your song and next week is two hundred K or it's two hundred on Apple Music, you are you are a failure. True. If you don't have hundred k on the Apple Music skill, and you're doing good musically in diaspora, you're not a failure at all. You didn't just break into your market target audience. We are doing good. Yes, you are great. Yes, you are, brother. You don't need to go into Apple Top Hundred to be a star. You don't need to go into Apple Top Hundred to be greatness. True. Sure. You don't need to go into Apple Top 100 to be who you think you are meant to be. Yes. I am here. I'm a living witness. I'm a living proof. I've never gone, I've never gone on my one Apple Music, Apple Music Top 100. But I have one of the biggest songs in the history of Afrobeats. Yes, you have. Dear young fast rising artists, I'm a living proof. You can do it. You can do it. Yeah. You can do it. Yes. Anybody can do it. Yeah. Anybody Joya can see his feet to even break into the status quo can do it. Fuck who the fuck I am. Fuck Oxlade. You can actually do it. Individually. In all lenses. And I'm not saying this because I'm on Joya Khan's podcast. I'm saying this because I did it. Yeah. And you can do it. And you did it well. God bless Africa. Yeah. God bless this podcast, thank you. God bless every African trying to dare for more. God bless every African that actually believes that it's going to top 10 to be the biggest and the most impactful Afrobeat artist. 
Portable is one of the most influential artists in the history of Afrobeat. True. And he has not had a top 10 in the past three years. True. Yes. It's three words. You can do it. Yes. And your mom's dad. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Let's look. Thank you. Respect. Thank you. Thank love. You. Love, 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 love.